Hi guys, it's just been over one year since we moved into this home and I thought now is a good time to run a water line to the fridge. Now I don't know the history on this fridge since it came with the home, but I'm really hoping the ice maker works. Either way, I'll show you a couple of different methods on how to run the water line to the fridge and in the end, let's hope it works. Let's get started. I removed pretty much everything from the freezer so we can actually see what's going on in here. But here we have our ice tray, which collects the ice. This lever in the bottom position like this is in the on position. So this will start producing ice if there's actually water connected to the fridge. Once the ice starts to be produced and builds up, it'll push this lever up. And in this position, it shuts off the ice maker. Obviously it's not gonna produce ice right now because there's no water ran to the fridge is what we're gonna do today. So I'm just gonna leave that in the off position, close this up. And the very first thing you should do when you're planning this out is deciding where you're gonna connect your water. So let's move this stuff out of the way. So the most common connection is gonna be underneath your sink. And you would connect onto the cold line, which is gonna be your right side. And you would tee off of that and run a quarter inch supply line to the fridge. And if the ceiling was finished in the basement or you're on, you know, home on grade, so you have no basement, this is probably the most common way to connect it. So you'd run the T, you would drill holes all along the back side of the cabinets, secure the line, and then connect the fridge this way. I'm gonna show you how to install one of those retrofit T's, but I'm gonna hop downstairs just to show you how I'm actually gonna run it from the basement because I have an unfinished ceiling. Here in the basement, I have my hot line, cold line, and then my reverse osmosis line, which goes up to the kitchen cabinet. And I'm gonna be using reverse osmosis water for the ice maker, but if you don't have that, you can just connect it to the cold line. So I'll be installing a T here on that half inch line, running it across here. My fridge is somewhere in this area. I'll have to mark it out, and you gotta be really careful when you're marking it out. So you don't hit an electrical line when you're drilling the hole, but also I have in-floor heating on the second floor, and I do not wanna puncture one of those lines. The 3 8 retrofit tees have a 3 8 compression swivel nut on the bottom, 3 8 compression on top to supply the faucet, and quarter inch compression on the side for the fridge water supply. To install these tees, shut off the cold water supply to the kitchen faucet, then open the cold water on the faucet to relieve any pressure. Disconnect the cold water supply and install the tee in line with the kitchen faucet's cold water supply. The two most common kinds of supply lines to the fridge are quarter inch plastic, as seen here, and quarter inch braided. Plastic tubing requires three fittings to make a leak free connection, a ferrule, an insert, and a nut. The nut gets installed first, followed by the ferrule. It is important to note that the ferrule is tapered and it is installed on the tubing with the narrow end of the taper facing towards the valve or fitting. It is also important to note to not use brass ferrules on plastic tubing. Brass ferrules are designed for copper or brass tubing and will cut into plastic tubing causing a leak. The insert is installed next, followed by the tubing being pushed as far as possible into the fitting and tightening with wrenches. Alright, time to slide with the fridge and check our water connection at the back. If you don't want to scratch your floors, it's a good idea to protect them with some cardboard or plastic. I'm not too worried about any scratches, as you can see, these floors are heavily worn and have plans to be refinished. At the back of the fridge here, we'll find our water connection. It may look a little bit different on yours. You may have a line like this, which you have to coupling into with a push fit connector. But this one here is a threaded connection, quarter inch threaded. I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign, but there's definitely Teflon tape on here. So it was hooked up at one point. So hopefully it still works. Now before I run this water line, I'm just going to remove this back panel and the front panel as well. 
and clean the condenser coil. This will help prolong the life of the fridge and also save a little bit of money on electricity as well. And if you're interested in this service, I do have a detailed video on it, but I'll just show you a quick before and after and not get too detailed on it. And wow, I am so glad I decided to inspect the condenser coils as this has to be one of the most clogged coils I've ever seen. This cleaning will definitely help prolong the life of the fridge. Now to drill the hole for the water line, what I want to do is get it as far back as possible or closest to the wall there so that the fridge doesn't interfere with it and run into it when you push the fridge back in. Now, like I said before, I have in-floor heating and electrical lines underneath here, so I don't want to risk just drilling a hole and hopefully not hit them. So I'm going to measure, get a measurement from up here, drill a hole from underneath up, and then most likely I have to move it over an inch or two, but that's fine because it's just going to be a little bit of a pilot hole that's left there. So to get my measurement, I used my kitchen sink drain, which I just transferred the measurement from here over downstairs, which is 48 inches. And then the other measurement is the exterior walls rest on top of each other. So this upstairs exterior wall is 134 inches to the back of the opening. And I just transfer that mark to the downstairs exterior wall as well. Here's my kitchen sink drain, so I measured 48 inches over from that, found which joist space I need to be in, and then obviously the uh, exterior wall measured 134 inches over, which leads me just on the other side of this light. So I'm going to cut back that insulation, tee into my half inch reverse osmosis line, run a half inch line up to a quarter inch shutoff, and then connect our water to the fridge. Well guys, I was planning on being close, but I didn't think I would be this close. I wouldn't do that again in another 100 years. But that's <laughs> that's the hole right there. You couldn't ask for it any better. So I'm just gonna widen that up to a one inch hole for the half inch line and keep going. I'm shutting off the water to the reverse osmosis system, opening the RO faucet to relieve the pressure and teeing into the line. Now if you're teeing into a cold water line and not an RO system, you would just shut off the main water supply to the house, open a faucet to relieve the pressure and install your tee. For the fridge's shutoff valve, this is a half inch PEX by quarter inch compression ball valve and the water supply is a quarter inch by 10 foot braided supply. With the shutoff in the closed position, this is a good time to turn the water back on and bleed any air in the lines by opening a faucet, then checking for leaks. It's a good idea before connecting the supply to the fridge to run some water through the line first. This will purge some of the air in the line and will also flush any debris that might have entered the line as well. The final connection is to the back of the fridge. Teflon tape is not needed for braided supplies as a rubber washer is used to seal the connection. This tab here is designed to hold the water line so that the line doesn't put strain on the fridge's fittings when you slide the fridge in and out. 
The tab is designed for copper or plastic tubing connection, which has a smaller outside diameter than a braided supply. So I'll be using a zip tie to adapt instead. Finally, we can turn the valve on and check for leaks at both ends of the supply. Well guys, I got it plugged in on this side just temporarily. I got the wire line ran, the valves on. All that's left to do is to flip that lever on the ice maker and hopefully this thing produces ice. If not, this is all for nothing. Wish me luck. Come on, come on. I'm just waiting to hear the noise of the solenoid turning on to allow water to go to the ice maker. Oh, it's moving. It's moving. Come on. Still nothing yet. Oh no. Oh no. All right guys, so I waited a few minutes here and I did hear the water run through it. I think it just has to run through a few cycles and then it'll start producing ice cubes. You know, it says here, wait 24, 48 hours before it's gonna produce ice cubes, but it's already cool from before, so it should should be a little quicker than that. I am hopeful, but let's check back in in 24 hours and see what this looks like. Another piece of advice is that most manufacturers will say throw out the first two full bins of ice cubes, and that's just to clear anything that might be in the lines or any impurities. So don't use your first two bins, and then after that you can use it as you need it. Another piece of advice is just to check on these connections, so your water connection on both sides, this side and the valve, for leaks over the next couple of hours. And that's because there could be air in the lines and if there was a leak, you might not see it right away and it might show up in a few hours. So I'm just gonna leave the fridge right here. I don't really care if it's in the way, but obviously if it's in the way in your kitchen, you can push it back in place, careful not to kink the line, and then pull it back out after a couple hours just to double check the connections and then you're good to go. Another tip is to tape the water line as high up as possible before pushing the fridge back in place. This will reduce the chance of running over the water line with the fridge's wheels or kinking the line. Good morning guys, and now for the moment of truth. Let's see if we got ice. Woo wee! We've got ice. Well that makes me pretty happy. What I'm gonna do is let this fill up completely dump that, let it fill up again, dump it again, and that just gets out any of like the impurities or anything that could be in the lines or left in the line since this has been idle for so long. And then on the third fill up, we'll be good to go and ready to use the ice. And now with summer just around the corner, I'll be able to sit outside and enjoy a nice cool drink. Well guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you found this video informative. And like always, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.